There we go. Oh, we got the mic going this time. After last week's uh, microphone coming undone debacle for the last 10 minutes, I figured today, let's keep it simple. Let's keep it basic. We're going to go with the, um, the classic, maybe questionable quality mic, but, uh, but everything should be there. Also, as usual, Good morning, my friends. Good afternoon, good evening, or good night, depending on where you're tuning in from. It is so good to see all of your beautiful, smiling faces again this morning. I'm excited for today. Cool stuff to talk about, cool stuff to share. A lot of changes going on in the world of marketing. A lot of, uh, a lot of changes going on personally, all good things, but um, excited to get to share that. I'm not sure those of you that checked your email and obviously got the link here versus say just um, finding it on YouTube. But if you saw the email, you saw that I'm working on something. I wasn't going to be able to announce it until early next week, but oh, it was a late night, early morning, busy couple days. I think I've uh, I think I've got something that I'm, I'm ready to share with just you guys. So I'm not going to email it out to the list yet, but but you're my people, my rider dies. So um, I'll give you the I'll give you the goods. Okay, let's say hi. Let's get to it. PRJCT1027. That is quite the name, my friend. Hi for the Philippines. 11 p.m. here. Hopefully you're a night owl. I'm super asleep by 11. So, hey, Rob, Corporal Diesel, good morning from Central Texas. Rob, a special shout out to you as well, my friend. Thank you for being there for the, um, uh, the live on AI and email marketing. You're, you're the only one that said, hey, your mic's a bit sketchy. So I was able to turn it off and switch and, uh, and switch to a better microphone, which is hilarious actually, because the, the best microphone is the one that's not working well right now. More money doesn't always equal better quality, but thank you for being there and for, um, for voicing that. Much appreciated. Kevin, hello from Lakeland, Florida, my friend. I'm gonna, hang on, we should Google where that is in Florida right now. Where is? Lakeland, Florida. I'm sure I did this a while ago. It was like Orlando, Tampa area. Do I remember right? Let's find out. I've got all of your comments here, so I'm not gonna... Okay, so we're... Oh yeah, just outside Tampa. There we go. Now I know. Or now I'm reminded. So all good. Corporal Diesel, nine likes so far. Impressive. Most impressive. Yeah, I think... I'm not sure. You mean the live? If so, we got more likes to go. That algorithm, man, it's likes hungry. Wants those likes. Also, I'm gonna do a better job, I think, of like constantly checking the um, the the comments if I can scroll down. It's a bit of a pain in the butt because I gotta scroll back up and find out where I was. So the software that I use takes the comments and then it like puts them in a chronological order, but sometimes it skips them, sometimes it goes over, so we'll see. Ambitious Endeavors, Rene, good to see you. Did my first Facebook Live, got a thousand link clicks. I forgot to add the lead page to collect emails. Is there a way to see who clicked from the insights on Facebook to send a message to them? Uh, the answer is not that I know. No, you can't really see that, but a thousand link clicks is phenomenal, especially if, let's just use really general rules here and say that a link click is worth a buck. It's a thousand bucks in free traffic, free traffic. Um, so that's amazing. And um, as far as not capitalizing on the emails, hey, join the club. You'll do it next time. I couldn't even tell you how many times or how many lost leads I've had because I forgot to like sync my software or do things right. So yeah, you just, you won't make that mistake again. Gus, good morning to you, Gus. Corporal Diesel, all right, Rob, also would love a video or series on how you do consultations and interact with clients. I actually have my pen and paper here today, believe it or not. So I'm gonna I'm gonna write that down because yes, I think that is a good idea. I've mentioned many times before. I don't normally anymore do um, consultations, but I do still occasionally do them. And also after having done them for so long, uh, I don't mind doing that. So video on consultations. For the record, how I interact with clients is very much like how I interact with you here. It's not much of a change. So the beauty of kind of being your true authentic self is you don't need to put on um, a different face or a facade or anything like that. You kind of just transfer it over. But yeah, I think the one difference might be is that when it's time for like a consulting call, especially if there's a lot of money involved, it's um, it's game face time. So I do that. Okay, let's see, Ruben. Coffee, pen, and notepad. You know it. I got my water because I'm like hyper caffeinated. I've been up since 
3 o'clock in the morning this morning. It was an early morning, like I said, but big stuff to share. Oh, I'm going to drop the link to that, and then we can talk about it later. I don't, wanna, I don't want it to derail us, but I do want to remember <laughs> so we don't get to the end and be like, hey, you didn't say anything about that thing you were going to say something about. So, Ruben, glad you're here. On that note, actually, uh, Rob, I also see your comment, so we're going to go back to your question in a second. First, though, let me drop the news. Actually, let me give you the news first, then I'll give you the link, then we can carry on with some questions. Q&A, all that jazz. A lot of soul searching lately. Had a really good chat with a friend of mine. We were going over value, business, marketing, all of those things. Um, and we were talking about ways to provide the most value possible. That was really the core of the thing. So I was telling him, hey, you're really good at this and you're really good at that and you should probably do this. What he told me was, um, was something that I, I've known for a while, but it was also uh, tough for me to sort of figure out how I was going to offer this. And he's like, hey, Adam, you're, the best value you have is when you can look at someone's marketing, provide a few quick tips, get them massive immediate impacts and changes. And I was like, yes, I love doing that, but I've always been limited to one-on-one. -on -one, and, um, and then there's only so many people I can work with and I don't have the capacity to take on more. And he's like, well, why don't you do a community? And I said, because I didn't really want to stretch myself that thin and I was worried about it getting too big. There's a lot more to talk about this, but the answer to all of these is this right here. So I'm not gonna pitch it now. I'm just gonna leave this up here for a second. Maybe I'll put it up here by my head. Oh no, we'll leave it there. Um, check it out after, save the link, write it down, whatever you gotta do. This is going to be my answer to providing the absolute most value that I think I can. And, and we workshopped it, we figured this all out. This has been kind of a long time in the makings. Uh, quick notes, for anybody that has is already a member of the Digital Marketing Academy, we'll just apply that price over to this. So you're basically get it for uh, the Digital Marketing Academy for free when applied to this one. Um, if you're thinking about joining the Digital Marketing Academy right now, just wait. Sign up for this instead if you feel that it's a better fit. It is definitely by application only because I need to make sure that we're going to have a good fit. I'm also going to cap it uh, to make sure that we keep it small and intimate. But all of my intentions of being there and showing up more often that are almost impossible to do in a free platform simply because there's no barrier to entry, I think this solves all of that so that I'm then able to, uh, to do more of what I want to do, which is uh, give you the goods. Okay, so we're going to leave that for a second. I'm going to hit some questions. Dasha! Hello, Adam. Happy to be here. Happy to see you, Dasha. Again, I love that contrast. That, like, light blue against the purple. Beautiful colors. All right, Rob. Oh, hang on. There we go. Doing a free consult for a customer in the handyman biz. Oh, I love the handyman biz, for the record. Uh, focus on website finesse and drive customers to site. What are some good things you do to ensure a good consultation? Perfect. So, the main thing that I try to do is I try to figure out what is most important to him. Um, so he's going to say things like, I want my website to look better. And you're like, cool, I get it. Like, but do you think it's like, is the primary goal leads or sales or calls? So I'm trying to get to the core of why they want their website to look better. Um, I don't beat around the bush too much. I don't use any fancy sales tactics. Like imagine your life 10 years from now and everything is perfect. What do you, what happened there? Like they all feel a little cheesy to me. So what I do instead is like, cool, where's your business at right now? And he'll be like, I don't know, a millionaire. I'll be like, cool, what do you want to get it to? And he's like, um, two million. I'll be like, great. What's your funnel look like? What, what is the process of someone finding you? Is it Google? Is it SEO? Is it through Facebook ads? Where are they coming from? Cool. What if we did more of this? What if we did that, less of that? Da, 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 da. Then what I do is I map out the plan for him. So I've got my pen and paper and I'm, I'm going through everything, um, mapping it all out. Then at the end, I present it to him. And I was like, cool, here's what I think you should do. We should do this, 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 this. How's that sound? He says, Sounds amazing. And I say, cool, would you like some help with that? And he says, God, yes, I, there's no way I'm doing that on my own. And then I say, cool, here's how we can work together. There's a book that I have that I have no idea where it is. It's super, super old. It's actually probably one of the newer ones when it comes to marketing, but it's still like a good 10 years old. It's by Frank Kern and it's on how to get clients. And I bought it as like part of a lead magnet package back when I was working with Frank back in the day. Um, it's phenomenal. I'm going to see if I can dig some of those up. If not, I'm going to look through my notes to find it, but it basically went through like a diagnostic sales call thing where literally we just ask questions. That's it. I'm asking a ton of questions. I'm trying to find the gaps and then I try to plug those gaps. I am Vonti Grand Rising, my friend. Good to see you. Finally caught a live video. How is your mental health? It's really good. Thank you. Better than ever. Um, 
we don't talk a lot about mental health on this channel. It's not really a mental health channel. Also, I feel it's like so far outside of my wheelhouse to give anybody any kind of health, um, mental health advice. But as a type A overachieving, um, ambitious person, I have battled with it for my whole life. Like the balance of work versus life versus success versus defining my value as a human being based on the intrinsic qualities of being human versus the outputs that I'm able to deliver or the, um, the people that I'm able to help. So it's an ongoing thing, but, uh, good, really good. Yunez, hello. Hey buddy, Mohammed. good evening from Dubai. Hey, Mohammed. Good to see you. Salam alaikum. Uh, how am I today? I'm doing amazing. Thank you very much. Very well. Ah, uh, Eunice from France. Amazing. Actually, we were just watching the Tour de France, the, the documentary on it, not obviously the actual Tour de France, last night on Netflix. And um, it reminded me of how much I love France. I spent a lot of time there. We, um, growing up in Canada, we learned to speak French. So my French is sketchy today, but still kind of there. Fitagogi, how do I use AI to make an app? I don't know. I've never used AI to make an app. I don't actually make any apps. Uh, I'm not against them. I think they're great, but wrong guy to ask. One enemy, needing to create a short ad for a product for a baby changing table. Oh yeah, I think we talked about this last time. Interesting, super niche, I love it. That said, I've never created a video ad. Would it be beneficial to create an ad with only images or should I use a horrible video? I love this question. Here's the answer, very simple. A good image will beat a bad video. So there's your answer. Go with the images, get that dialed in, figure out your offer. Once that's done, then we can start doing um, all the other jazz. Uh, start playing around with videos and, and stuff like that. I wonder if I can, I'm gonna make that smaller because it's distracting me. Let's put it over here. Actually, you know what would be neat is if we change that color so it like blended in with the background. Can we do that? Let's play just for a second. We'll see if we can, uh, I think we can. Check this out. Ta -da -da -da, close enough. There, now it just kind of hides there. Uh, breakless Bikers, love from India. Hello, my friend. Breakless Bikers, that sounds terrifying. Hello, terrifying. Brian, hey, buddy, good to see you. Greetings from Bel Beloit, below, Belois, Wisconsin, near Madison. I can say Madison. Uh, you became a star from the silent area last episode. By the way, how's your foot? Yeah, I know. I was doing all my answering questions in complete silence. It's a shame because I felt like I was on a bit of a roll, but that's okay. That's the beauty of these lives. They're raw. They're, un they're authentic. How is my foot? Yes, for those that are unaware, in September of last year, I ruptured my Achilles tendon full tear, like had the foot dangling there. It's a gross image. I'll, I'll spare you the details. Had it surgically repaired. The, um, the, the recovery process is a bear. Oh, it's a bear. So I'm going on like, what are we at now? July. So I'm like nine months in, 10 months in. Um, it's not fully healed, but, but I'm there. I can walk now without limping. The strength is coming back, but slow. LAE media. Do you travel a lot? Asking because you have a lot of money. A lot of money is subjective, so it depends. I think you can travel for not a lot of money. Um, so my history is I used to be a pilot, a business jet pilot. So I traveled all the time, but that's because I was the guy flying the plane. So I kind of got burned out from traveling that way. We hit uh, 30 countries, which is cool and exciting. Then I went through a phase where I was like, I never want to travel again because I'm totally exhausted. I've started a couple years ago, I, I just kind of got bit again. I was like, oh, I miss, I miss seeing places and cultures and people and different environments. Uh, also, I believe if you have kids or even if you're a young adult, even an old adult, exposing yourself in the um, non-literal term to, to different cultures and experiences is probably the best way to realize that we as people all have way more in common than you could ever imagine. From a marketing perspective, it's important because you, d you learn about different cultures and nuances, and you also learn how people think and are motivated by similar intrinsic drives. Uh, so now I do travel a decent amount. Um, next big trip is gonna be a doozy. We're heading out in uh, later this year to a bunch of places. Bunch of places, we'll talk about it later. Esteban, AI <laughs> is killing us. I joke on my words. I'm just kidding. I know you're kidding. It's good. AI is our friend. David from the armpit of the South. Good to see you, my friend. I'm doing very well. Thank you. Very well. Gus, do I offer mentorship? Ah, so funny question. Where's my, where's my finger to point? Here we go. This is, um, 
This is my attempt. So before I offered one-on-one -on -one consultations, but then the price just kept going up until the point that I w it didn't make sense um, for most people to pay the price, thousands of dollars for an hour. And it also didn't make sense for me because all things considered my time, if we look at it like from a revenue and, and dollar perspective, my time is worth thousands of dollars an hour, um, more than that. So it was like, oh man, I'm charging people too much for the value and I'm not being, I'm not making any money off this based on other value that I could provide. So this is my solution, wherever it is, I can't even point. Um, so for the price of one hour, you now get one year uh, of slightly modified group stuff. But yeah, I'm still in there. Mohammed, how are you? Amazing. I hope you're good too. Sharuk Kamam, hello, watching you live from Egypt. Hello, Sharuk. I used to live in Egypt. Uh, in fact, I'd be curious to know, how are things in Egypt right now? I was living in uh, Katamea, right on outside of Ring Road, kind of like right down the road from the JW Marriott there on Ring Road. Beautiful place, loved it. I was living there, unfortunately, when the Arab Spring happened. Uh, so we evacuated out. It was terrifying. A lot of my friends were in tears. It was a sad, sad time. So that was the last time that I've been to Egypt. So I would like to go back. I would like to take my kids there, but let me know how is the situation, the political situation. Esteban, good to see you. Gaming fan, good morning, Adam. Any tips to help provide free value through cold emails to get a response for paid advertising? Yes, the best way to provide value through cold emails will be to do a, basically an unsolicited audit where you actually do your due diligence and research the thing that you're talking about. So look at their social platforms, look at their offers, look at their website, look at comparable ads other people are running. So if we're running Facebook ads, for example, we can go to a competitor's Facebook page if they're not running ads. We can go to about page transparency, ad library, see the ads that they're running, and then we can either offer them feedback on the ads that they're currently getting, or we can um, show them their competitors and what they're doing and how they might want to do the same. Kaylee, hello from Kent in the UK. Hello, Kaylee, good to see you. I'm actually gonna be in the UK as part of our trip. So I think right now the plan is Portugal, Spain, Rome, UK, possibly Morocco. There might be one other secret location in there, random spot, but we will see. And that's happening around January-ish. Codes Fusion, hey, do you know how I can validate a business idea or you don't specialize in that? I appreciate, Oh, I do specialize in that. I guess specialize, I don't know. It's, it's something that I do a lot of. Um, how do I validate a business idea? The, the fastest, easiest way is by looking at other competitors in the space. If there are other competitors, it is normally a pretty good green light that there is money to be had, especially if A, they've been there for any length of time, proving that there is market viability, product market fit, sufficient uh, TAM, total addressable market for you to go to. Number two is especially if they're running paid ads of any kind. Google ads, Facebook ads, both are easy enough to find. Uh, check your competitors to see if they're doing it because if they're spending money for paid client acquisition, it's normally a good sign that they're a positive ROI on that. So it's a good sign for me. Brian, at this point, I'll never catch up to Kevin in Lakeland for the most marketing mastery stars or points. No, I don't think anybody will. Kevin's like, he's been here since the, the early days. I don't know if he's missed one. He's our, he's our guy. Uh, ambitious. Okay, Renee, uh, I think we said that already. We hit that one good. Hey, there we go. Rocky Raccoon, jovial coach. Morning, dude. I got good news. We just started working with a company, running ads for them, but we are doing it for free for the first three months. We are having fun. Hey, well, there's two amazing things there. The, um, the getting a client. Three months is definitely a long time to run ads for free, but hey, if you're having fun, go for it. The goal here is the second you get a really good result for them, be like, hey, how are you liking things? Could I get a referral? Could I get a testimonial? Could I use this as a case study? Try to get as much um, marketing collateral assets, social proof back from that. And the best time to ask is like a day or two after you just knock things out of the park for them. Mike McLaughlin, good morning Adam. Mike from Columbus, Ohio. Good morning, Mike. Good to see you. Glad you could be here. Mutha Geki, I have a question. Post away, post away. That's like my kids, I, I gotta, I try to stop them from doing this. They're like, dad, I was like, yes. Can I ask you a question? Yes, okay. And then they proceed. I was like, guys, just ask the question. Like, let's just, let's go right to it. 
Lay Media, do you travel a lot? Yes, answered that one already. I think it's important, but travel where and when you can with the budget that you have. It does not need to be expensive. The reason that it is expensive for me now is because I have four kids. So that means most places we go, we need like two freaking hotel rooms or, um, or a big Airbnb, which doubles the cost of everything and six plane tickets, which is fun too. Rhythm, time, don't know what that means. Let's keep going. One enemy, would TikTok be a good platform for my new product for baby changing tables? <laughs> we'll comment the jingle in the next comment. <laughs> yeah, maybe actually, if you can come up with a really funny video ad, then TikTok would be probably a great spot. I would also take that same short form vertical video and put it on um, Instagram and Facebook and YouTube is a short. I'd probably run paid traffic to it if I could get it to convert enough. But again, the, the creative of that is going to be, uh, that's gonna be the factor. Ali Sultan, hello Adam, learning a lot from you. I'm a graphic and motion designer. I'm currently seeking to expand my client base and broaden the scope of my work. Any general advice on where, how and where to begin? So let's see, graphic design, motion design, currently seeking to expand my client base and broaden the scope of my work. Well, if you're trying to get new clients, and why well, I guess there's there's two parts to this question, Ali. The first of which is that you're trying to do new things, and the second piece is that you're trying to do it for new people. And those aren't mutually exclusive, but they're challenging to do at the same time. Because your best path to get new people is to take the work that you've already been doing and show the new people how you can do it for them. Whereas the best way to get new kinds of work is to go to your existing clients and offer them these new services and see if they will take it. I'm gonna actually leave that there. Pick whichever one you like, kind of like a choose your own adventure book, but both of those will work, but I wouldn't do them both at the same time. Pick one, start there, report back. Francisco, hey Adam. Hey Francisco. Shaw, are you seeing any future of website design? Um, depends what you mean by future of website design. Do I think people are going to continue to need websites? Yep. Um, do I see any benefit of using WordPress over like the billion other things? Nah, not really. I like it. I use web WordPress for some of my companies. I use uh, Squarespace for others. I use Kajabi for others. I use HubSpot free for a lot. Like, yeah, whatever. They're, that's all kind of good. They're, they're all pretty amazing right now. It's kind of like cameras, actually, digital cameras. It's like if you're going to spend, I don't know, a couple grand on like a camera, they're all going to do basically the same job, same megapixels, same autofocus, same resolution, same export capability, same video, same everything, so, etc. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see, <laughs> there we go. We all know our little ones have to pee a booby, so when we change our little ones, we keep them safe from oopsies. That's kind of funny, I like it. Yeah, I like it. There was a, um, I used to run traffic for this um, probiotic company that sold it for, like it was a probiotic supplement for kids and they took, it's funny, like some of their branding and marketing materials prior to me getting involved were already pretty, like what I would consider, like that's kind of gross, but man, did it ever work well for them. And like it, it appealed to the parents that they were going. So I'm going to spare you all the details, everybody, but anybody like having four kids, I've changed a lot of diapers. So there's nothing that I haven't seen or done on like a near daily basis for the last seven years. Um, so there's a lot of things that don't gross me out anymore that I find funny that someone without kids would just be appalled by. My brother-in-law doesn't have kids. He's not gonna change a kid's diaper anytime soon. Let's stop there. I created an award-winning film about Wisconsin elections, but it didn't sell. I hit Facebook groups and Facebook ads to no avail. I had the five ends lined up and he got reactions. Um, my, my first gut reaction is that there is a very, very big difference between award-winning and commercially viable art, products, services, anything like that. So I know a number of people that are gifted filmmakers, photographers, actors, artists, like, I mean, their stuff is worlds beyond mine and they're um, paycheck to paycheck, struggling to make it by. So, there, we got to walk that balance, right? Between doing the things that you like and believe in and are really good at and the things that the market, um, the paying market wants and is willing to pay for. That's that's the ultimate test. So congrats for doing the awards. I think that's fantastic, honestly. Um, but like from a revenue perspective, it's the reason that when I create ads, I don't, this might be a deeper conversation on my 
personal values and so on. But like, there's a number of different advertising organizations out there where you can submit your ads to and, and you can enter contests and, and often the best ads are like just super funny and creative and all that. But do they sell? I don't know. I've always been more uh, concerned with making uh, results, making money from it. Dexter, the mic is working. Ah, we did it. We did it. It's probably not the same quality mic, but it's here. Mujtaba, glad to be here this week too. Good to see you. Yeah, you know it. Funny stuff. Emoji challenge. What was that comment? Hang on. You had something there. Think? I forget now. We'll have to get back. Rhythm. I don't know what you're talking about, but <laughs> we'll go. Atul, how to increase sales for custom t-shirt using Google. Well, there's a very specific one. So my first answer is more of a question, which is why Google? Um, if it's a custom t-shirt, like why are, why are we married to Google and not looking at other platforms like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, probably that's it, maybe Pinterest. Um, the best way to do it was like, you're gonna need very, well, it's gonna be a bit of a, you're, you got some work ahead of you, but essentially this is gonna come down to a Google ads campaign with like a billion different keywords, each targeting a very specific variation of that t-shirt that takes them to a very specific landing page with that t-shirt mocked up and shown. That's the secret. So it's like, hey, is your name Adam and you do marketing? I'm clicking that ad. And then if it's like, Adam the marketer, I'm probably not wearing that shirt. But like, regardless, I'm interested. It's funny. Robert Merrick, good morning from Pensacola. Hey, we got a, got a Florida people represented here today. Faux or Fox. We'll go with faux. Faux, because it looks like a faux hawk. Hey Adam, I've been doing brand strategy and design for years and years now, but I'm looking to expand and get into marketing. Where should I start? Ooh, good question. So if you've been doing brand strategy and you want to get into marketing, one of my good friends is a brand strategist and um, phenomenally talented brand strategist. And when we have conversations, and, and she's always amazed. She's like, how do you know this much about marketing? I was like, you actually know a lot of this too. You're just looking at it from a different way. So what I want you to do is we have to start thinking of how all of this brand equates to ROI and results. So rather than brand awareness, how is the consistency going to increase um, conversions? And how many touch points do we need? And how can we grease the funnel by making it more... Um, more smooth and, and making sure that we're putting our best foot forward. So I think you already know a lot about customer avatars and designing things that fit them and so on and so forth. We just need to now flesh that out into something that like is clearly tangible about getting results to grow leads, customers, sales. Francisco, cheers from Atlanta, Georgia. What would be the top three CRMs you'd recommend for a personal law firm? I can't give you three, but I'm gonna give you one, which is... This one, hang on, there we go. And the reason is, is because this is what I used and I don't have, I don't have any, do I have any students at all running personal injury law? I don't think so. Not right now, but when we did, this is what we used. So we ran this through the CRM and uh, we ran ads to it and the rest is history and it worked very well. So I'll leave that with you. Here, hang on one sec, we'll have it so you're looking at the link. Look at that. It's an interactive experience. Hassan, future billionaire, I like your confidence. I uh, hope you have a nice day. What are your thoughts about affiliate programs for your clients and make it successful and encourage them to join and make sure it's not something like a pyramid scheme. Yeah, so the big thing with affiliate is um, know and like and use the product yourself. That's a big one. Um, as far as affiliate schemes, yeah, if they've been around for any length of time, you can look at reviews, you can look at other people that are getting results with it. Um, like affiliate marketing is, is different than multi-level marketing and, and they sometimes get confused and they could not be further apart. Like affiliate marketing is where you're promoting something and you're paid a commission much like sales. Um, network marketing, multi-level marketing, MLM, that's kind of, that is like, I don't want to cast a broad net here, stereotype everything, but like that is more pyramidy in its structure because it's reliant on you like getting people below that and getting people below that and recruiting and you're not just selling the product, you're also providing a business opportunity. Whereas affiliate marketing, you're not really providing a business opportunity, you're just helping sell something or connect someone with something that you believe in and use. Hope that makes sense. K 
Kaylee from Kent in the UK. I want to identify the target market for my company by sending a survey to customers. Should I send to all customers, paying customers only, most profitable customers only, combination of all three? So a lot of this is going to depend on the size of the, the customer pool that you have access to. So it's going to be very different if the company is serving uh, or has served like 100,000 potential current customers or 100. So if you've got a massive pool to draw from, yeah, I would probably send it to all segments and then I would weight them accordingly. So the best people, the only people I really care about are paying customers because they vote with their money and their opinion is really all that matters. I've talked about this a lot in my videos. I feel very strongly about it, mostly because anybody that's starting a business or launching a new offer, you're going to be met with just a ton of opinions from Auntie Sally to your mom, to your friend, to, and everybody's gonna be like, that's a great idea, that's a terrible idea. And it doesn't matter. I, I could not care less what they think. In fact, I'd rather they don't tell me because their opinion is less than valuable. It's dangerous because it's irrelevant. Now, if they buy stuff from you and give you money, then it makes sense. Not because they're all of a sudden more worthy as people, but because their opinion in regards to the product or service or offer that you're selling now actually makes sense. People talk a lot. Talk is cheap. So, ooh, that was a rant. There we go. So, yes, yeah, send to all customers. I, I assume you mean leads, but yeah, for sure. Definitely segment them differently. You can ask them to self-select. Be like, hey, have you bought something? Are you planning on buying something? Da, da, da. So you can self-select them. If you have access to different customers, I would just send them, or different customer lists. I would just send them different surveys so that you can keep them uh, separate. Because again, I'd be asking my current customers, why did you buy? What's the best thing? What did you like? What led you here? What are the best ex uh, results that you've experienced? And all my potential customers would be like, why haven't you bought? What would make you buy? What are you still concerned about? Et cetera, et cetera. Rana, hey Adam, good morning. Hope you're doing great. I hope you are too. My question is, how do you come as expert when you're just starting out or don't have any results to back it up? Well, my friend, then you are not an expert yet, but that's okay. That's where we start. So you don't come off as an expert when you're first starting out and you don't have any results and you don't know what you're doing because that would be fraud and lying and unethical and dangerous even. Um, could you imagine like you go in for surgery and the guy's like, yep, I'm an expert. I'm really good at this. And you're just he's like reading the manual. He failed med school. I don't want that. That's sketchy. So you, you just tell it like it is. Look, here's the deal. I'm motivated. I'm ambitious. I'm learning this. I'm studying it 12 hours a day. I'm going to get you results. I'll work for free or for cheap in order to do this, but I want a case study and a referral and a testimonial and whatever else you can give me. Yeah. Honesty is the best medicine there. Corporal Diesel, my pleasure, buddy. Rana, a lot of competition in my niche and I want to come as expert, build trust. My niche is coaches and consultant service is paid advertising. Yeah, if you like, then study it, get better, and then you'll be okay. Create content on it, live it, eat it, sleep it, breathe it. Ah, uh, Zusan Penenjev, do you know Uzbekistan, bro? I do know Uzbekistan. Um, I've never been to Uzbekistan, but I know where it is. Ah, Grand Rising, my friend. Okay, I want to start a marketing consulting business, but I feel stuck in analysis paralysis, you and many other people. I've been studying marketing for two years now and still feel like I don't know enough. Any tips to get going? Yes. Take all of marketing. I've talked about this before. Is like the T-shaped marketer. I don't have my iPad anywhere, do I? Ah, it's not look, linked up anywhere. Let's visualize. T-shaped marketer. Imagine the top bar. And in it, there's like all these little squares. And content marketing and marketing strategy and paid ads and organic and under organic, then we start making a T that comes down. And under that organic or under paid ads in this case, we'll say it's Facebook ads, Instagram ads, YouTube ads, Google ads, TikTok ads, all the ads. Then even from that, we could break down Facebook ads and are we doing instant messenger forms? Are we doing instant forms? Are we doing vertical video ads? So you've got to select which area you're most interested in and which one you want to focus in and then get a broad understanding of the rest, which after two years of studying it, you probably have a broad understanding of most things. Like you know the difference between SEO and paid traffic and organic traffic, right? So you're good. Now let's pick one and let's focus in there and, um, and dominate that one. Bruce from Denver. Hello fam. What's the key or advice for great copy and images when it comes to Facebook campaigns? Would you just test multiple campaigns with different copy and images? Awesome timing. I have a video on this that's coming out on Monday or Tuesday um, on how to generate leads with Facebook ads and ChatGPT. 
it was a fun one. I had a lot of fun putting it together because I think the my view on it has changed thanks to ChatGPT and just how much copy we're able to get very quickly. So yeah, you test. Um, and you definitely test different copy and images. So here's the way I do it. Again, I keep looking for my iPad, but we're just gonna interpretive dance our way through this. I'll make my campaign. It's pretty much always the same campaign. Like 90% of the time I'm doing create campaign, I'm picking leads, I'm running them through an instant form, I'm syncing that form up with high level to send my um, SMS follow up with. Like it's almost always the same. So we've gone through leads, then I have my ad set. I'm picking what I believe is my best audience. I'm keeping it probably more broad than I have in the past. So if it's, um, I don't know, local market of Denver and it's say, I don't know, I'm a, I'm a women's gym in Denver. So I'm targeting Denver and women. Stop it right there. Then I go to my ad copy and creative and I'm coming up with uh, one of, probably just one to start with of like my best body copy, my text. Um, you can come up with a bunch, but like I'm, I'm trying to like craft together one that I believe is just amazing. I'll use ChatGPT, I'll write it myself, I'll run it by friends and family, I'll read through it a bunch of times. Once I have that, then I'm finding three images to go along with it. So if you're sticking with me, that's one campaign, one ad set targeting women, Denver, three ads under that ad set. Those ads are one text copy, three different images. And the reason that I test three images first is because A, images are very easy, like I get one like that, um, and B, they have probably the biggest impact on getting that initial click because it'll stop the scroll and get someone to take action. Once I have my winning image, then I go back and I try to find different body copy to go with that. And then I'll test different body copy against my winning image. Then I'll go back to my audience and then it, we just ping pong back and forth. That was a lot of stuff all at once. All right, Mothegeki, hello from Uganda. Hello. I'm just butchering your name. I'm so sorry. Mutha, Mutha Geki. We'll go with that. Uh, Quincy. Hey, Adam. I enjoy the simplicity of your content watching from Northern Colorado. Hey, Northern Colorado. We got two Colorados. Good to see you, Quincy. Glad you're liking the videos. Kaylee. Awesome. Hope you will love it here in the UK. Yes, I do love it in the UK. I used to work out of London a whole heck of a lot. So I spent most of my time in Kensington on Canby. What was it? Right across from the Sainsbury's there. And then I've got family in Weymouth and all over. Uh, Fino Spot, any suggestions for marketing a drop shipping business 2023 because people buying behavior change love from India? Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna give you, here's my thoughts. I'm not a huge fan of drop shipping. I know, I know, challenging, controversial take. The reason is, is because as far as sustainable business models go, I don't like anything where I'm playing the middleman and my business is strictly arbitrage where I'm relying on other people not just coming in and, and eating up all my margins. So I really have no competitive advantage in that field. So I think the best advice I can give you, other than saying, look for other business models, because that's not helpful. Maybe maybe you love drop shipping. Maybe this is your calling. Uh, find some kind of competitive, unique, differentiating factor that allows you to do something that other people aren't doing. Because if you're selling the same thing as everybody else, you'll have to compete on price. And that is terrible. Okay. Do -do -do -do. Brian, just curious, did you teach yourself copywriting? And I'm sure everyone asks you this. Are you related to Amelia? Yes, the great Amelia Earhart. Uh, I am not directly related to Amelia Earhart. I do get asked all the time, especially because I used to be a pilot. Um, so yes, but no relation. That'd be cool though. Did I teach myself copywriting? I guess insofar as like I didn't go to a formal copywriting school. I'm not even sure they have those. I'm sure they do somewhere. Um, but I definitely did not like I don't know, I guess it depends on what you mean by teach yourself. Like I took courses, I bought every book that I could find and I hired mentors and coaches and took their courses. So if that's the case, then yes, but they also taught me, so. Waco, hello, hello my friend. Mladen, Mladenov, hello Adam. How many ad sets on Facebook you think is normal to test per week? Depends on your budget, totally depends on your budget. Massive budget, you can test 100. Teeny tiny budget, test two. Um, the rule that I like to do here is that I want each ad set to be with a daily budget that's going to allow me to collect three to five conversions per day. I appreciate if you have no idea what I'm talking about, that's going to sound like Greek, but 
if you if you're anticipating or you're getting five dollar leads um, and you want to get three to five a day, you need a budget per ad set of fifteen to twenty five bucks a day. If you have more, test more ad sets. If you have less, probably still hover around that range or don't do paid ads. Waco from East Africa. Hey, my friend, which part of East Africa? Let's be specific. I'm always curious. Mohit, thoughts on how to get clients without testimonials? Yep, the, the short answer is you work for free and you get testimonials. Uh, because you need case studies and results, you need to prove that you know what you're doing before anybody is going to give you money to, um, to actually do that for them. New people are a risk to established businesses. So, work for free and also watch who you're going after. If it's a small business, a new startup, they don't have a lot of money, but they do have a testimonial that, that they can give you, they're gonna be more likely to give you a testimonial than a big business who's just not gonna take a risk. Like they'd rather pay um, for the certainty and the safety than they would get something for free where there's risk involved. Kaylee, let me know if you need any suggestions or places to visit. I will for sure. Always, yeah, hit, hit me. Let me know what you think. I've been, um, I, I know it pretty well, but I definitely, um, I'm always open to new ideas and new places to see. All right, Matha Geki, how would you pitch your marketing skills to a CEO during an interview? The best way, oh, there's, there's two sides to this question. The first of which is that I would rather they know about how good I am prior to the interview. So I'm making sure that my portfolio, my resume, my CV, my website, my social profiles, there is fleshed out and, and beefed up as I can possibly make them. There's videos, there's content, it looks good. I'm like, I'm putting together a really thorough package because they're going to look at that. So they should already know what you're capable of prior to doing this. Um, then once you're there, yeah, they're just going to ask, what have you done before? What are the results you've generated? What about this? What do you think about that? Do, 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 do. Mohammed, I commented earlier too. Maybe it's a glitch or wasn't showing. So that's why I commented again. Appreciate your answer. Yes. Sometimes I get them. Sometimes I miss them. Cunning plan. Sat looking after my wife's gift. Oh, shop. oh, I see what you mean. I got it. You're, you're sit looking after your wife's gift shop in Ormskirk, UK. I can't have the volume on, but trying to lip read. Can I get a big thumbs up on the screen? Lip reading away. Good for you. Ormskirk. I don't know where that is. Hang on. Ormskirk. I'm going to just like um, Ormskirk, UK. I've never even heard of that. That sounds super cool. Ormskirk. Is that in the... It's in... Oh, no. It's north of Manchester. North of Liverpool, right north of Liverpool. Oh, way up there, right on, very cool. I gotta get to, um, I've never been to Scotland. I know I know you're not in Scotland, but like, that's where we gotta go at some point. So very good. Ah, uh, Vitor Cordero, hello, hello Vitor, good to see you. Uh, CXL, opinion on Instagram boosted post reels. Yep, not a fan. I've got a video on this called don't boost your Facebook posts. The same thing applies to Instagram Reels. Elon, hey buddy, good to see you. Adam, do you have a specific workout split that you follow? Yes, 90, 80% of the time, it's push-pull legs. So day one is chest, shoulders, tricep. Day two is back, traps, bicep. Day three, legs. Then I repeat it again. Then I take one day for just cardio. I do about 10, 15 minutes of cardio at the end of each time. And I do some kind of workout in the afternoon if I remember. So that is my normal split. And it has been forever. Esteban, finding lots of marketers who are preaching, doubling down on speaking in front of similar audiences to get our first clients. Yep, huge fan of that. This would be what I would consider an unscalable but incredibly effective strategy. So there's a hierarchy when it comes to marketing activities from like most effective to least effective. Also, it's directly correlated that the most effective is the most time consuming and exhausting and non-scalable. So one-to-one, -one, always your best plan. If you can get it in front of one person and talk to them about marketing and diagnose their problems and provide solutions, you're gonna have significantly better results by doing one-to-one. -one. What's next? One-to-many. So getting in front of audiences, doing speaking, et cetera, et cetera. What's after that? One-to-one -one virtual. What's after that? One-to-many virtual. What's after that? Some combination of um, video, 
to many, then audio to many, then text to many, and we can just sort of like go down the list. Uh, you'll figure it out, right? Like a tweet is obviously less, less effective than a long form video, which is less effective than a live like this, which is less effective than me being in person with you right now. Whew. Okay, LAE Media, is being with like-minded people important to achieve success? Yes. Yes. Um, is it mandatory? Maybe, but it sure helps. Man, does it ever help. It's like, it expedites the curve and the ability to immerse yourself in the environment faster than anything else. To the point that I would say, if you're serious about anything, marketing, business, healthcare, language, whatever it is, if you can immerse yourself in that environment, you are going to succeed, oh man, generalization, but like 10 times faster than somebody who isn't. There's just something really powerful about bouncing ideas off other people, seeing where they're going, realizing what's possible. Good example of this. When I first started in business, very first started my very first agency, it was fresh out of the corporate world, I had no idea what I was doing. My goal was to make 100 grand a year. I was like, if I can make 100 grand a year, man, that'll be amazing. Everything will be fine because I didn't know what was possible after that. As I started working towards that goal, I started surrounding myself with other people that were on a similar path. And their goal, because they'd already hit 100, was a million. And I was like, a million? Is that a real thing? Can people make a million? Then sure enough, make a million because you're in that circle. And then you're like, okay, hang on. And then you're around other people. And they're like, okay, next goal, I'd like 10 million a year. And you're like, what? That's crazy. No one makes 10 million a year but they do all the time. But you've got to be in that circle and you've got to hear their stories and you've got to think how they think and you have to do what they do. My schedule to the outside world is um, it's probably a little weird. Like the t I go to bed early. I wake up early, 3 a.m. this morning. I eat weird food. Let breakfast this morning was um, wild sockeye salmon, macadamia nuts, a super weird protein shake. Oh, it's so tasty though. Good protein. Like not normal things. It's not a bowl of Cheerios. Um, workouts. Good hour every morning, audiobooks, podcasts, a lot of stuff. Okay, Brian, hello, my green and red Christmas wearing friend. Good to see you. Glad you could make it. Faux makes perfect sense. Good, good, good. Brian, what are your thoughts on using high level for selling low cost items? T-shirts, hoodies, stickers, tumblers? Don't know, never done it. Um, I'm not typically a fan of most low ticket stuff. So simply because the margins aren't there to justify the cost. So it's like, let's use easy math. If I want to make a million dollars. I can sell one million one dollar stickers or I can sell, oh, I'm not going to do the math here, but like you get, you're going to get it 10,000 at X, Y, Z dollars or a hundred thousand at this dollars or whatever it is. So it's a lot easier to make a sale at $10,000 than it is at $1. I shouldn't say that. It's, it's not 10,000 hard, 10,000 times harder to make a sale at 10 K than it is at $1. It's harder for sure. Five times harder, 10 times harder, but not 10,000 times harder. But the payoff is 10,000 times greater. So not to dissuade you from selling low ticket stuff. Um, just be careful. Francisco. Yes. As always, your tips are gold. Oh, my pleasure, my friend. Glad that was helpful. Okay. Let's see. How are we doing? Okay. Yeah, buddy. I'm going to send you to that video on the boosted post thing. I just don't love it because there's a difference between views and leads, as I think you're experiencing here right now, right? It's like we can show our stuff to 25,000 people, but if they're not the right 25,000 people, doesn't matter. Good example. I'm opening, I'm not actually opening this, but like we use the gym example targeting women in Denver. If I have an ad that's targeting, uh, pardon me, if I have a business that's a gym in Denver for women, I don't care if I get 25,000 views from men in Florida. Right? With me? You're with me. I am Monty. I, I have a potential client who runs a beauty supply store selling beauty and hair products. He wants to create more organic awareness. How you approach this client to help him out? Um, this way. Hang on. Where's my other link? Do, 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 do. Model market message media machine. That's the way. That's the answer. What's his model? Sounds like beauty supply selling beauty and hair products. I'd be more specific than that because that's pretty broad. So what kind of beauty and hair products? Who's my target market? Um, he runs a beauty supply store, so he's probably targeting a local area for women there. So that's already limited things down. What's the message? How does his stuff uniquely, how is his store uniquely positioned to better solve their problems? Media, where is his ideal target market present and active online? If he doesn't know, he can ask them. Let's ask our current clients. Hey, 
what social media app do you spend the most time on? You can also run small tests to figure it out. And then my machine, what is my lead gen or sales conversion tool of choice? What message can I put in front of them to get them to convert? What kind of ad uh, can I run? All of that stuff. Whew, just a reminder to hit that like button. Look at this. We'll do a, a zoom effect. You know it. Thank you, Rob, for the room. Oh, man, now I can't stop it. Hang on, hang on. Now I can't stop it. Perfect chance. I don't even know how to hit my own like button. I can't do it. Someone do it for me. I'm going to get some water and we'll carry on. And by I'm going to get some water, I mean I'm going to lift the mug to my face. Elon! Holy moly, me and my zooming. Do you have any tips to create converting short form videos for parents? I don't know what they like to see or what they really care about. And I think it's important to use the right words so they don't skip. Yeah, my friend, you got to do more due diligence. Um, you're doing the right thing by asking me right now because I can help you a little bit. Um, but yeah, you're going to you're gonna want to talk to parents, ideally in person, because then you're going to be able to follow up with more like, well, what about that? What about this? What does that mean? What do you think about this? So the best thing you're going to be able to do is show like parents with kids. So if you have a video, you might be able to find this on stock. But like if I remember correctly, Elon, it was like no tie shoelaces. So let me see if I can find on here um, parent kid shoelace. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. You might actually have to record this yourself. Stock video. Yeah, parents and kids enjoying walk in beautiful woods. Yeah, you're going to need, you're going to have to do some searching uh, because that would be the thing that I would lead with is like if I can show a parent with a kid tying his shoe or like untying and then falling or tripping immediately after like that's going to hook their attention then you can lead with the problem and all the other things we've talked about each week up until now Kaylee amazing so detailed massively appreciated thank you my pleasure best to send from the company email or from the individual account manager handling the accounts email send it from whoever they're used to getting the email from so if they've never got an email from the company or they're not going to recognize who it is, then don't do that. But if they are, then do that. Hopefully that makes sense. Like if I was going to send an email to you, I would send it from Adam Earhart, not Marketing Insiders or Modern Marketing or Digital Marketing Academy because you'd be like, I don't know who this dude is. So yeah, we, we send it from the one that they have the most experience interacting with or are going to be most familiar with. Brino, how good is promoting a lead magnet? ebook. Oh, there's the kicker, but we'll talk about that in a second. To capture emails and promote product as an affiliate on the ebook itself, as well as on the thank you page using Facebook ads. Um, I've done this my whole career. So effective, if you do it right. I don't like ebooks because they are too much of a commitment to ask someone to read. It's like, hey, here's a 60 page ebook on something that you're never going to go through. So ebooks don't convert. Lead magnets do. But I would stick with like a three to five page downloadable PDF cheat sheet blueprint guide, whatever. Like one of those things, like download our free guide, get this result in five minutes. Like that's what you should be shooting for. Then we can follow up with email. Then we can provide all of the things that we need to do for affiliate and so on. The question about Facebook ads and whether that's profitable is going to come down to your funnel. So what is our cost per click? What's our cost per conversion? What's our conversion rate from lead to actual um, sale? Does it make sense? Do more. Does it not? Fix it. Turn it off. Layton, thank you. What's a good general average CTR on Facebook in your opinion? Ah, uh, such a, a loaded question, Mladen. It totally depends, right? But ballpark, what I like to see is, we're, we're talking Facebook ads, by the way, not organic, Facebook ads. I like to see a 3% CTR and a 1.5% LCTR. The reason is, I'm going to type that out actually. So I like to see 3% CTR and, how do I do and? We'll just do it this way. 1.5% LCTR. Let's change the background because we don't need that brown color. There we go. So this is what I like to see. And the reason that I like to see this is because a 3% click-through rate on a Facebook ad shows that enough people are interested enough in the ad to click read more, to hit the like button, to leave a comment, et cetera, et cetera. I like at least a 1.5% CTR, so half of the 3% is what I should have said, half of that. 
And the reason is, is because it shows of the people that clicked to read more or click the like button or commented, at least half of them are also interested in going over to my landing page to learn more from that. So if I'm getting like a 3% click through rate and a 0.5% CTR, then my offer is garbage. Like people like my ad, but nobody wants my offer. Uh, on the other hand, actually you, you normally don't see it the other way, so you don't even have to worry about it too much. But like, those are basically the ratios that I'm, I'm looking for. Ah, uh, El Tio Pollo! Is that Uncle Chicken? Is my Spanish correct? Because that would be amazing. The Chicken Uncle? Good morning, Adam. Greetings from Argentina. I want to start my ad agency here. Can you give me some advice about that? Yes, sir. I've got videos on it. So go check out, uh, just go to the channel, type in Adam Earhart Marketing Agency, and you will find videos that will give you more detailed instructions that I can offer here. Esteban, you are welcome. Do, 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 do. Uh, Brian, is a uh, copy part of your course? Yes, but not like directly. It's in there in each section. So it's less of like, here's the model module on copywriting. And it's more like content marketing is basically copywriting. Email marketing is basically copywriting. All of the messaging parts, basically copywriting. So yeah, copywriting is in there everywhere. Kaylee, Cornwall is one of my favorite places. The coast is stunning and tons of activities and places to visit too. Yorkshire, Dales, Kent for sure, Lake District. Oh yeah, the Lake District. Hang on, gotta write that down. I've not, um, I've not done Cornwall, though I've been so close because we've got family in Weymouth. So we're like an hour drive, two hours drive. So when are we there though? We're there in like the worst time of year to be there. So we'll see. Mohammed Akib, Javed, how can we target organically the U.S. customers, clients through Insta and TikTok as I am residing in Pakistan? Organic targeting, you can't really, other than making a post and, and location, pinning it with like, I was here when this happened. Um, paid ads, you totally can. You just target the U.S. The only other option is creating, creating a new account with a U.S. address. But yeah, or creating content that's just so incredibly amazing that U.S. customers like it, comment, share. There, there's no easy answer on that one. It's either make better content or tag things um, location-wise. Mike, morning from Tennessee. Morning, Mike. Good to see you. I haven't been to Tennessee in years. Five years? Nashville a few times. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, Gus, what do I think of Alex Hormozzi's value equation? I think it is very solid. I think he has taken a good job of um, what we've done in direct response marketing for decades of uh, putting together like how to how to quantify scarcity and urgency and uh, removing risk and all of those and putting it in a super nice easy to understand graphic so yes all good all good jay you're late but you're here so that's all that matters how do you follow up with facebook from leads i'd like to get automated follow-up sms if possible yeah one way the only way where is it now again my my thing this is it that's how you do it um, if you don't use this, there are other softwares that allow you to do it, but you, you have to use a software. Do you? You do. I don't know why you wouldn't actually. And I'm going to eat, maybe I'll eat my own words on this one. It's like, maybe there's a way to like rig it all. Actually, you'd still be using software though, through like Zapier and things like that. So yeah, you've got to use a software, especially if you want to automate it. The one that I use and recommend and love high level, go to highlevelguide.com, get all that stuff. Okay. How we doing? We're good. We got like two minutes and then pancakes because after my super healthy salmon and macadamia nut and what else? Protein shake, keto granola breakfast. I don't know, pancakes now. You gotta, gotta celebrate a little once in a while, every Saturday. Let's see. Uh, Milan should, what should I be concerned about subcontracting with another agency? Their results. That's it. Yeah. That's it. I mean, we could go into like more detail on trust factors and things like that, but if they're doing a good job and reporting things and getting results, it's kind of all that matters. Let's see. Mutha Getty, thank you. What is the first thing you do as a digital marketing manager on your first week of a role? I deep dive into this. Hang on. Lots of links today. Where is it? This one. Deep dive into this. Model market message, media machine. So I'm trying to understand every facet of the business from this perspective. That's it. That's my first week. And uh, I write it all out and I take a million notes, et cetera, et cetera. Maddie, Maddie GB, hope all is well. Hey, from Malta. Hey, Maddie. Funny story. Might, um, 
might be making it to Malta. Maybe, maybe, we will see. Maybe I'll have like a, a meetup, a Marketing Insiders meetup in Malta in, uh, in a bit. Which part of Malta are you in? Let me know, it's not a huge place anyway, but tell me where you're at. Okay, I think we're good, nine o'clock, we're hitting it. Kaylee, my pleasure, I'm glad we were able to answer some questions. 100% go to Cornwall, yes, I, in the summer. Yeah, it's not the summer when I'm going, so we will see. All right, my friends, thank you for being here. Thank you for the amazing questions, the amazing sharing and helping of each other. As usual, it's been a pleasure. I will see you in the next video. I'll see you inside Marketing Insiders. Don't forget to check out that link here. And um, have an amazing week. I'll talk to you soon.